The dragon, lacking comprehension of human speech, merely nodded in agreement with Lan's words. Despite her mature appearance, the dragon lady exhibited childlike behavior, darting around while Lu Fan explored his newly acquired abilities. Among these skills was dragon taming, enabling the player to subdue dragon-like creatures, Dragon Claw, which metamorphosed the player's limb into a draconic appendage with strength proportional to the current dragon companion, and Dragon Fang Strike, harnessing dragon energy for a devastating attack. Additionally, Dragon Inspiration elevated both user and dragon attributes and attack potency by 30%. This revealed the Black Dragon's legendary status, confirming Lan's suspicions. Upon successfully taming the dragon, Lan unlocked these skills. Notably, Dragon Inspiration's potency exceeded that of a priestess's buff, while Dragon Fang Strike boasted formidable damage. Furthermore, the transformative power of Dragon Claw augmented the player's offensive capabilities. Astonishingly, the Black Dragon Hatchling possessed attributes five to six times superior to an average individual's. Lu Fan quickly realized that, even without personal intervention, he could effortlessly outmatch other combat professionals of similar caliber. Lan accessed the Black Dragon's profile, revealing impressive stats. Strength at 342, Agility at 267, Spirit at 359, and Endurance at 373, marking her as a legendary creature. Her arsenal included potent attacks like the devastating Jaw Assault, charging forward to inflict continuous bleeding damage, and Lava Flame, spewing flames for damage while providing self-healing. With her Black Dragon heritage, she boasted a 50% damage reduction immunity to debuffs, and a 500% self-recovery boost. Additionally, her Blood Pact-enabled skill, Bloodline Connection, granted a 10% attribute bonus to the Dragon Tamer. Lu Fan was astounded by the immense power contained within the young Dragon Hatchling. Even at level 1, it possessed formidable skills and nearly 400 attribute points. With such strength, even a human expert 20 levels above Lu Fan would find it futile to challenge him, rendering ordinary humans inconsequential. Furthermore, the bloodline connection directly doubled all of Lan's attributes. He understood that this bloodline connection was the reason he felt significantly stronger after successfully taming the legendary Black Dragon. Lan was now overjoyed, a smile spreading across his face, as he realized that this was indeed the expected power of one of the three strongest hidden professions. No matter how formidable a hidden profession may be, it had no chance of prevailing against the dragon race. Without a doubt, the dragon tamer was undeniably the strongest hidden profession, not the weakest. At that moment, he noticed the dragon lady eating the eggshells from which she had hatched. Lan deduced that although the hatchling could transform into a human, she still behaved like a newborn dragon. However, one question remained. What should Lan name the dragon? Suddenly, an idea struck him and he remembered that a little black dragon born during the night before dawn should be named Xiao Yi. Even the dragon seemed delighted upon hearing the name and smiled cutely. Lan understood that the dragon liked her new name. He was content, for even though treasure hunting was perilous, it had all been worth it. Lan patted Xiao Yi's head and inquired if she was hungry. The dragon lady nodded with an adorable smile as she finished the remaining eggshells. Lan informed her that it was time to hunt some monsters to satiate her appetite, as they couldn't return home on an empty stomach. He stood up smiling while contemplating that the trial determining his eligibility for university admission was approaching, and many students must be honing their qualifications by seeking opportunities outside the prestigious southern provinces. The Top Scholar Award and Qualification for the Highest Educational Institution in the Dragon Kingdom which Lan aspired to attend, were now within his reach. However, he knew that even after this occurrence, he couldn't take the entrance lightly, and leveling up and mastering skills should be his and Xiao Yi's top priority. Lan started running with a smile, and Xiao Yi followed him, her face beaming with delight. Lan told Xiao Yi they were heading deep into the Mount Shi Basin, where monsters tastier than eggshells awaited the dragon. As they advanced, Lan and Xiao Yi suddenly heard noises and saw a group of creatures charging towards them at insane speeds. Lan immediately accessed the system which identified them as Plains Hyenas with the Rending Bite attack, inflicting continuous bleeding damage, and Putrid Aura, debuffing the target with a disease. Once killed, they would drop canine teeth worth 95 dragon coins. 
Lon knew these bastards were more dangerous and tougher than the bloodthirsty Grey Fox. Even after defeating the wild level 10 bloodthirsty Grey Fox, he had suffered numerous injuries. Remembering this, Lon hesitated to attack, but the Dragon Lady was already airborne with a devilish smile, eager for more food. Even Lon understood she wanted to take the lead. His eyes glittered with confidence, as he thought the Mount Shi Basin posed no danger to the strongest dragon Tamer and his dragon. Both Lan and Xiao Yi smiled, advancing towards the plain's hyenas, ready to send them into the dragon's stomach as her meal. The dragon soared high, and as the hyenas roared, she inhaled deeply, her stomach glowing with a flame aura. Finally, she attacked the hyenas with her lava flame, and as the creatures burned, Lan and the black dragon earned experience points, as Xiao Yi continued using her lava flame attack. Lan vigilantly monitored the system, witnessing their level increases. Luan had finally reached level 11, and the Black Dragon was now level 3. He smiled, ordering Xiao Yi not to waste time on small fries. Both looked towards a den inside the mountain, and Lan told Xiao Yi a big guy had been waiting for them for a long time. Three piercing sets of eyes glared at Lan and her dragon, and finally, the creature emerged from hiding. It had three heads, clearly showing the monster's killing intent. It was none other than the three-headed Blood Lion a level 25 lion-like creature with multiple attacks. It possessed inning roar, increasing defense and attack, trample, dealing significant damage within range, and triple flame, inflicting three instances of fire area damage. Upon defeat, the creature would award 23,790 experience points to the player and drop materials like Blood Lion's Tooth and Blood Lion's Skin. Lan knew that for a level 25 elite boss, a strong team of monster hunters would typically be required just to approach, but he was a dragon tamer now and could handle anything. He ordered Xiao Yi to engage the three-headed lion in battle. As Luan and Xiao Yi advanced, the lion used roar, increasing its defense and attack power for a certain period. Then it started charging a heavy triple flame attack. Luan understood the necessity of allowing time for his attack to charge. As he dashed forward, he instructed Z to collaborate with him in disrupting the lion's skill. Flames enveloped Z's body as Luan gripped his cleaver firmly. Together, they lunged towards the three-headed lion, witnessing the dragon revert to its original form during the mighty jaw assault. The black dragon swiftly closed the distance, sinking its fangs into the creature's face and restraining the other heads with its razor-sharp claws. Upon receiving confirmation from the system that the triple flame attack had been successfully halted, Lan commended his dragon for its excellent performance. With a swift motion, he unleashed the dragon fang strike, harnessing the dragon aura to deliver a devastating blow with his weapon. As the creature fell lifeless to the ground, Lan and his dragon retreated to their initial positions. The dragon resumed its human form, leaving Lan astonished by the rapid leveling up facilitated by the assistance of elite monsters. Luan had reached level 14, while his dragon companion had attained level 9. Suddenly, a system notification alerted Lan to the activation of the treasure map system, signaling the arrival of a new treasure map for the day. A subtle smile graced Lan's lips as he pondered the potential exclusive items for dragon tamers that this treasure might unveil. Promptly, he instructed Z to accompany him on the treasure hunt, to which the dragon lady eagerly agreed, wearing a smile that mirrored her master's enthusiasm. Meanwhile, deep within the Mount Shi Basin, a trio stood contemplating their next move. The blue-haired girl questioned her uncle's decision to let such a rare opportunity slip away, but he explained their predicament. Sun Ji, the warrior uncle, revealed that activating the Fort Wittis realm required a minimum of five individuals, a number they currently lacked. He proposed sending Miss Kai back to Zhanghai City to recruit more help. However, Miss Kai, a rogue, interjected, expressing doubts about the feasibility of the plan due to the time constraints involved in her journey. Identified as Qin Qiu, the blue-haired girl's profession remained undisclosed as she highlighted the allure of fortuitous realms with their heightened rewards compared to regular dungeons. Despite this, she pointed out the challenge of their fleeting existence, lasting only 24 hours, rendering the uncle's plan unfeasible before the dungeon's closure. Soon Ge reassured Kin that she need not fret over gains and losses like those in the secret realms, as her strength alone could secure her admission to the top ten universities, 
which would grant her access to secret realms. Despite this assurance, Kin remained despondent, lamenting their proximity to the secret realm, with one member short. Suddenly, Sun Gay and the rogue girl heard a noise and swiftly turned, poised for attack. To their surprise, they encountered Lu Fan, who assured them he meant no harm and was merely passing through the mountain. The uncle, taken aback by the presence of such a young boy in the Mount Shi Basin, advised him against material hunting and urged him to leave. However, Qin intervened, introducing herself as Qin Shu from the Qin family in Zhanghai City. Though aware of the abruptness, she invited Lu Fan to temporarily join their group. She tempted him with the promise of a 100,000 dragon coin reward for simply accompanying them into the secret realm of chance, assuring him that he wouldn't need to do anything else. Upon hearing about the prize, Lu Fan halted in his tracks, contemplating the offer. Recognizing the significance of the Qin family's pursuit of the secret realm of chance, given their status as the wealthiest family in Jianghai City, Lu Fan inferred that the final reward must be exceedingly rare. Meanwhile, the girl continued persuading Lu Fan, assuring him that his role would be minimal, requiring only his presence to help meet the secret realm's requirements, and in return, he would receive his 100,000 dragon coins. As the scene shifted, the group, previously consisting of three members, had now recruited a paladin, but remained one member short. The uncle led the way towards a large purplish portal, leading to the secret realm, urging Lu Fan to follow quickly if he desired the reward. Emphasizing the rarity of the opportunity, the uncle stressed that such chances were not encountered casually. Lu Fan responded with a smile, expressing his disinterest in wealth but willingness to assist if the group cooperated and adhered to fair distribution rules. The uncle and the two ladies were taken aback by the maturity of his words. The rogue lady swiftly grasped Lu Fan's implication. He intended to distribute rewards within the secret realm, based on individual strengths. Confirming her understanding, Lu Fan reiterated his stanza, further solidifying his position. Upon hearing the proposal, she pondered deeply. Reflecting on the group's average level, which hovered around 20, and observing Lu Fan's seemingly inferior strength compared to the rest, Kin couldn't help but wonder about his unwavering confidence. She questioned whether his demeanor stemmed from genuine skill or mere arrogance. Nevertheless, with the group in dire need of another member to access the secret realm of chance, Kin extended her hand to Lu Fan, suggesting a cooperative team formation since he expressed willingness to collaborate. She reassured him that the previously promised 100,000 dragon coins remained his, emphasizing the group's sincerity. With a smile, Lu Fan accepted the deal, shaking Kin's hand. As the agreement was sealed, Kin felt a surge of happiness and excitement, urging everyone to hasten their departure. However, Lu Fan harbored reservations. Concerned that revealing his legendary dragon, Z, to strangers in the wilderness could spell trouble, he resolved to summon the Dragon Lady only after obtaining the reward from the secret realm of chance. Despite feeling remorseful for his dragon's exclusion, he believed it to be the prudent choice. With that decision made, Lu Fan followed the group through the portal and into the secret realm of chance. Upon stepping into the secret realm, he was greeted by a bleak and desolate landscape, characterized by lifeless trees and a dancer, purple hued fog enveloping the surroundings. A system notification promptly informed Lu Fan that he had entered the secret realm of Chance, specifically the Morning Village, a level 20 realm with significant difficulty. It imposed a requirement that only groups of at least five individuals could enter. Taking in the eerie atmosphere, Kin remarked on the village's unsettling quietness, where their voices echoed in solitude. The assassin among them analyzed the heavy air and the absence of life within the fog. Meanwhile, Sun Ge expressed concern for Lu Fan's safety noting his lack of equipment. However, the uncle was not prepared for what happened next. With a smile, Lu Fan raised his hand, summoning a fiery aura that surrounded him. Suddenly, a large black machete with dragon scales materialized in his grasp. A system notification revealed it to be an epic quality weapon, usable without any level requirement. Reserved for dragon tamers and dragon blood warriors, the weapon boasted the ability to bestow the dragon blood armor upon its wielder partially transforming them into a dragon and enhancing their strength by 65 and stamina by 30. Lu Fan expressed gratitude towards the sophisticated treasure map 
that had unexpectedly activated following the defeat of the three-headed blood lion, granting him the chance to exchange his novice machete for this legendary weapon. The sudden unveiling of his remarkable armament left everyone astounded. Sunge inquired whether Lu Fan was a recent transfer student rather than a mere material hunter, given the extraordinary nature of his weapon. Meanwhile, the assassin lady grew increasingly irate and questioned why the uncle was so concerned about a stranger. Her mind was resolute. Should Lu Fan harbor any nefarious intentions, she was confident in her ability to swiftly neutralize him. Suddenly, Soon Ge was taken aback as a hand emerged abruptly from the ground, startling him. These were none other than the corrupt zombies, level 15 adversaries that yielded 620 experience points upon defeat, along with a corruption poison sack and 256 dragon coins. Possessing perilous abilities such as the entangling hug and bite attacks, along with the insidious corpse poison that afflicted each strike, causing continuous loss of life points, they posed a significant threat. Even those who perished under the effects of the corpse poison would rise as corrupt zombies themselves. Kin cautioned the uncle to be wary as a swarm of corrupt zombies emerged from the ground beneath them, poised to attack and infect the group with their deadly corpse, poison. Swiftly, the paladin stepped forward, brandishing his shield to intercept the onslaught of each and every corrupt zombie. A status window materialized, revealing him to be Gia a level 20 knight skilled in combat. As the uncle retreated to stand beside the assassin lady, he commended Gia for his prompt assistance and counterattack. The uncle himself boasted a combat profession, being a level 28 warrior, and skillfully dispatched the approaching corrupt zombies alongside the rogue lady, who was also a level 28 rogue. Observing the skirmish unfold, Lu Fan noted each development appearing in his system window. He recognized the warrior, rogue, and knight's defense of the portal as a well-thought-out configuration and strategy, particularly suited for the uncle, considering his imminent transition to a new profession for the second time. Suddenly Kin raised her staff skyward, surrounded by a yellow aura that lifted her slightly off the ground as she intoned spells and charged her attack. With a final flourish, she unleashed her holy light star rain attack, gathering energy to shower the enemies with starlight rain, inflicting holy damage within range while simultaneously healing allied targets by the amount of damage inflicted by the zombies. As multiple meteorite-like attacks streaked through the air, Sun Ge and the rogue lady swiftly evaded the incoming onslaught. Meanwhile, all the zombies fell victim to Kin's expansive area-of-effect attack, obliterating them without a trace. Grinning, Kin remarked to Lu Fan that this was her specialty. It was revealed that Kin possessed the concealed profession of Holy Light Mage, capable of seamlessly blending offensive and restorative magic. While her attack damage may not rival that of a mage and her healing abilities may not match those of a priest, her dual capabilities proved invaluable to the team in various situations. A notification appeared, disclosing Kin's status as a white-level hidden professional, the Holy Light Mage. Even Lu Fan was taken aback by the revelation of encountering another hidden professional in such a short span of time. He praised the effectiveness of Kin's holy damage against the zombies. However, the tranquility was short-lived as an earthquake rumbled beneath their feet, causing them to hastily regain their balance. Lu Fan deduced that the commotion had alerted some elite monsters, who were now advancing toward the group. Judging from the sound of their approaching footsteps, Lu Fan surmised that they were a considerable number. Suddenly, a blood-red hand emerged from the ground prompting a system notification revealing them to be level 20 blood zombies. These creatures promised a bounty of 840 experience points upon defeat, along with blood corpse poison sack and 90 dragon coins. Armed with a blood-sucking bite attack that inflicted damage while healing the zombies, along with the insidious corpse poison imbued in every strike, they posed a formidable threat. Additionally, they possessed a new ability, Blood Fury, which fueled their aggression boosting their strength and agility by 40%. Gradually emerging from the ground, these zombies were determined to eradicate the entire group of living beings before them. As Soon Ge observed the elite monsters closing in, he swiftly directed the rogue lady to protect Kin and Lu Fan, while instructing Jia to accompany him to prevent the horde from breaking through the front lines. Halting his ongoing skirmish, 
Jia promptly obeyed the leader's command, both warriors poised for heavy attacks. Sun Ge unleashed his full moon technique upon a blood zombie, severing its hand from its undead body, while Jia thrust his sword toward the creature's heart, aiming for lethal damage, or so they thought. To their dismay, the zombies showed no signs of damage, instead smiling wickedly as they absorbed both weapons into their bodies. Their laughter grew manic as they activated the corpse poison, infecting the group while healing themselves. Perplexed, Jia struggled to comprehend how this was possible, while Kin lamented her inability to dispel the poison without the clarity of a priest, rendering her helpless to aid anyone. Meanwhile, the zombies continued to swell in size, engulfing Jia's hand and intensifying the effects of the corpse poison with each passing moment. Desperate, Jia cried out in agony, urging the group to help him and pleading with Soon Ge to release his weapon to avoid infection. Soon Ge rushed to the knight's side, ordering the rogue lady to defend them from the encroaching blood zombies while he attempted to extricate Jia from the grasp of the muscular undead. However, she struggled to fend off the relentless onslaught as the zombies sought to assimilate her into their ranks as well. Suddenly, Lu Fan's voice rang out, urging Soon Ge and the knight to remain calm and allow the rogue lady to continue the fight. It became apparent that one of Lu Fan's eyes glowed with a crimson hue as he brandished an epic machete, ready to join the fray against the monsters. Sun Ge urged Lu Fan to step aside from the encroaching red blood zombies, fearing he would suffer severe injury if he remained in their path. However, Lu Fan's eyes gleamed with fierce resolve as he wielded his legendary ink dragon machete, enveloped in a yellow flaming aura, and swiftly struck at the blood zombie's throat. Witnessing this astonishing display left everyone utterly astounded, with Sun Gi particularly incredulous at Lu Fan's unexpected triumph over the zombie menace. Despite Lu Fan's attempt to return Sun Jie's sword and encourage him to press forward with a smile, Sun Jie remained fixated on questioning Lu Fan's inexplicable prowess as a newly transferred student. Yet, amidst their conversation, the urgent matter of Paladin Little Jia's grave injury demanded immediate attention. Kin rushed to Jia's side, urging him to hold on as he prepared to administer healing aid. Lu Fan grinned, his eyes ablaze with dragon aura, as he assured Sun Ge that he was simply a regular level 14 student, emphasizing there was no need for falsehoods. He explained that his purpose in coming to Mount Shi Basin was solely for practice ahead of the upcoming examination. Meanwhile, Kin, in the midst of tending to little Jia's injuries, overheard Lu Fan's words and realized they were both students in the same year. She struggled to reconcile how a level 14 student could possess greater combat prowess than Sun Ge, who was at level 28. Suddenly, a red blood zombie lunged at Kin from behind, its ghastly grin sending shivers down her spine. Swiftly, a mysterious figure intervened, brandishing a crossbow and warning Kin to be cautious. However, to her astonishment, the newcomer outpaced her, swiftly subduing the zombie and delivering a decisive blow with his legendary machete. With the threat neutralized, Lu Fan explained that the village's zombie population would only grow stronger. He proposed to step into the front lines to fill the void, seeking their approval for this decision. As Sun Ge contemplated the offer, the ladies recalled a rumor about a mysterious figure in Zhanghai City wondering if it could be none other than Lu Fan himself. Kin smiled reassuringly, informing Sun Ge that they were counting on him from this point forward. If he and the uncle took the lead, Kin assured him that she would take care of little Jia, while the rogue lady covered their rear. She even disclosed that the secret realm's guardian should be present in the village. Upon hearing this, Lu Fan introduced himself to the group and urged them to follow swiftly, delving deeper into the realm as he took the lead. However, the mere mention of his name sent shockwaves through the group, confirming their suspicions. Lu Fan was indeed the fabled hidden class dragon tamer who had recently awakened, a subject of much rumor and speculation. Despite Lu Fan's reveal as the legendary dragon tamer, a class regarded as the weakest, the group remained utterly perplexed by the immense power he wielded. The scene transitioned to the village's center where Lu Fan and his companions found themselves relentlessly battling wave after wave of bloodthirsty zombies. As he fought, Lu Fan contemplated the dire situation. Kin's abilities could not cure the corpse poison ravaging little Jia's body, and the teleportation gate, their only means of escape, would not manifest until they defeated the secret realm's formidable guardian.
Urgency gripped Lu Fan as he realized they must hasten their efforts, or risk losing little Jia to the insidious poison spread, which could even transform her into one of the undead. However, the rogue lady couldn't help but wonder why there was no sign of the dreaded guardian, even at the heart of the village, where one would expect its presence to be most palpable. Suddenly, little Jia's sharp eyes noticed a group of zombies, stealthily encircling Sungay from behind, accompanied by an ominous rustling sound emanating from the debris at his back. Summoning every ounce of his remaining strength, bellowed a warning to his uncle before collapsing unconscious to the ground. Witnessing this, Kin raced to his side, desperately imploring him to hold on. But in that moment, a crimson beam of light pierced through the debris above the group, revealing a colossal, iron-skinned zombie with multiple heads and a single menacing red eye as its focal point. This nightmarish foe surged towards them with insane speeds, posing an immediate and terrifying threat to their very survival. We come to understand that the menacing iron-skinned zombie was a formidable level 20 monster, capable of yielding a substantial reward of 40 dragon coins and 3 in 720 experience upon its defeat. However, its true threat lay in its array of deadly abilities. A corpse poison attack, an assimilation absorption that allowed it to absorb and merge with poison targets, increasing its maximum HP, and a steel skin ability that caused it to enter an iron skin state, boosting its defense and endurance by a staggering 40%. The rogue lady gasped in horror, realizing that the secret realm's dreaded guardian had manifested before them. Upon witnessing the iron skinned zombie, Lu Fan grasped the severity of Little Jia's condition. Her corpse poison had worsened to such an extent that it now attracted the attention of these deadly IR skin zombies. He urgently commanded the group to swiftly defeat the zombie before it could attempt to assimilate and absorb the paladin. Spurred into action by Lu Fan's warning, Sun Ge immediately charged towards the zombie, unleashing a powerful moonlight slash. However, his attack proved futile unable to even scratch the iron-skinned foe's impenetrable defenses. Undeterred, Lu Fan rejoined the fray, awakening his formidable dragon aura. Understanding that time was of the essence, they could not afford to allow the zombies to attack slowly, as the corpse of poison continued to spread rapidly through little Jia's body. Undaunted, Lu Fan immediately took his black machete and pierced it through the iron-skinned zombie's main red eye. However, his attack proved futile, as the creature had entered its steel skin state, increasing its defense and endurance by a staggering 40%. Lu Fan examined his ink dragon scale machete, realizing he needed two more swift strikes for they had no time to spare. The zombie could attempt to absorb little Jia at any moment. Suddenly, his gaze fell upon the status window, revealing the dragon blood armor skill, which could partially transform the user into a dragon. Meanwhile, the iron-skinned zombie finally charged towards the paladin, its assimilation absorption skill primed and ready to absorb the poor soul. In that crucial moment, Lu Fan commanded Kin to coordinate her holy spells with his attacks, while he began transforming his hand using the blood dragon armor. He instructed his uncle to protect little Jia with the aid of the rogue lady. As Lu Fan's transformation completed, one of his hands had morphed into a draconic appendage, ready to heed his commands. Heeding his call, Kin began chanting her holy spells, her staff raised high into the air. Together, Lu Fan and Kin charged towards the iron-skinned zombie, with Lu Fan leaping at the creature with all his might, while the holy light mage unleashed her holy starlight rain attack upon the undead foe, hoping to deliver a devastating blow and defeat it once and for all. That concludes today's video. The next part will be uploaded once the following three chapters are available. If you enjoyed this installment, please leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to catch future uploads, and consider joining the channel membership to support the creation of more exciting content. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next captivating video. Have a wonderful day.